Okay, I'm probably biased here, but if a movie has Vince Gilligan in the credits, I'm on board. So Bang Bang Alley is a crime anthology film and split into three parts essentially. The first part, Asat Pusat Daga, which translates to, for those who don't speak Filipino out there, translates to Dog and Cat and Mouse. It's written and directed by Jan Yuzan and stars uh, Bella Padilla. It's essentially about this journalist who is in hiding after she escapes a political killing. The second part, Makina, which translates to Machine, I guess, uh, was written by Zygmar Sigan, directed by King Paliso and stars Gabe Mercado as a kind of down on his luck humble dude who accidentally runs into and kills an old woman with his car. And the third part, Pasokal, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right because I think it means stray cat but I'm actually really not sure, uh, was written and directed by Ellie Buendia and stars Megan Young as a woman who kills someone else out of anger and is also in hiding while she waits for things to die down pretty much. Now I will admit, I kind of have a hard time reviewing anthology films because I don't watch a lot of short films, I don't watch a lot of anthology films, so I kind of don't really know how to review them. Do I review it as a whole, do I review them in parts, then like my grade in the end will be like an average score. But I'm gonna do it like this, I'm gonna review each of the parts like in order, but my final grade, quote unquote, won't necessarily be an average. I'll also be talking about my thoughts on the movie overall at the end, so. And just a side note, it's interesting to note that all three directors here, they're first time film directors. And I'm not really sure what King Palisop did before, but I know that Jan Yuz and Nelly Bundy are very well known musicians here. It's just interesting to keep that in mind because you can kind of see how, you know, what they did before influenced their filmmaking now. And as with most of the anthology movies I've seen, Bang Bang Alley is inevitably uneven, although I do think it has good things in it. But before we really get started, this movie does open up with. Uh, like a self-titled really short segment called Bang Bang Alley about like this bodyguard who is like at a karaoke bar and he goes and kills someone because they were singing My Way and that that really is just kind of like a Filipino joke and this whole segment just kind of leads up to that joke and it just really falls flat like I really didn't like this opening segment because I didn't know what it was doing there. I think opening segments kind of have that responsibility to set the tone but this didn't really set the tone at all because the following segments weren't necessarily like trying to be dark comedies or whatever and and no just this first one just really came off like that and didn't really work this made me realize that if you want to do like a black comedy you have to hit that tone really well or else the audience just is not gonna get it, and I didn't get it and it's unfortunate also that it's not even as well written or well directed as the rest you know I didn't feel as much effort put into it but anyway it was a short segment so like I'm not gonna talk about that much uh, first of all, we've got Asat Pusat Daga, which I thought was okay. I do mean that in a good okay, not a bad okay. Um, Jan Yuzan has you know, a past in playwriting, and that really does come off here, and he even acknowledged it himself that maybe a bit too much of my playwriting stuff was in the script, you know, because this has a lot of dialogue in it. And But I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, there are lots of movies that rely on dialogue, and if you have like a dialogue heavy script, what you need is a good director to be able to not make it feel like a stage play and I think Jan Yuzan does that well. Because among the three segments, I think Asat Pusat Daga takes place on like the smallest scale. It really is pretty much confined to this house for most of the time. And you know, I don't really mind that there was so much dialogue because I thought the directing made it seem claustrophobic, you know, it didn't feel stagey, it really felt like it's a story about the characters and about the things that were being said, the ideas between these characters. And keeping it confined there was, I think, a good move. And in terms of the look of this film, there's a lot of handheld shots and lots of, you know, just very, very small close-ups and stuff. Like, it wasn't trying to present a big image of, like, with a political statement or whatever. It really just was focused on these characters, and I think that was the right thing to do. Now I do also think that the characters were well defined because you know when it comes to a political kind of crime thing like this it's very easy to just make your characters represent certain political ideals and what I liked is that you know there are lots of gray areas here and I think the actors really did a good job making these characters kind of memorable. I was really impressed by Bella Padilla like surprisingly I thought she would kind of just be a one note kind of character but she really did you know give off this strength. And, you know, you have the Joel Torre, who I think ever since On the Job is going to be like an every crime movie ever. 
and you know his presence is very well appreciated he was really good in it what I liked is that also with the writing credit to the dialogue here is that there's a mix of English and Filipino and sometimes when that happens it doesn't really feel that balanced because a lot of uh, writers here in the Philippines they use English lines if they want to like you know have like that money line you know but here they don't you know he doesn't really do it that much and it does come off as natural I also thought Art Acuna did a good job and I usually have a problem with how he's always just mad all the time in like the movies I see him in but here at least it did kind of seem like he had layers to him however while I didn't mind the whole you know playwriting-esque aspect I did kind of take issue with how much exposition there was and while again I think Yan Yuzan directed well enough so that like when they were explaining things it wasn't just shots of them talking but still, like, the amount of exposition in it, like, kind of did take away from the show-not-tell thing. But my biggest problem with this first part is that the ending was really, really weird. Like, I didn't really understand where it was going, because I felt like it would have ended at a certain point, then it just kind of keeps going. And I feel like that wasn't exactly necessary, but I'm not sure. I feel like this ending part had a bit too much story and wanted to progress things a bit too quickly, and it just was not handled as well, because the first parts had the luxury of being confined to the house and whatnot. And just, I don't know, it kind of fell apart near the end, but overall I thought it still was an okay segment. Okay, now we move on to Makina, which is my favorite part among these three. I thought it was actually really, really good. Now this is the part I meant that had Vince Gilligan in the credits for some strange reason, but I remember watching this segment, I was thinking, I feel like some Breaking Bad kind of vibes from this, and lo and behold, his name was there, so I guess there's some sort of influence. Now what I like so much about Nakana is that it really builds a complete world, you know? Like, that's one thing I love about, you know, good segments in anthology films is that we don't, when they don't re really rely on the other films in the anthology to kind of give it the complete story, like, Nakana really is its own thing. And it builds this world through really tight dialogue and, I think, very well-directed sense of, like, craziness or paranoia. There's really cool stuff in the cinematography here, like, you know, really vivid colors at certain points. And just really gives that feeling of that this entire thing is taking place inside the mind of this person now. He's kind of going crazy. And in terms of acting, I thought Gabe Mercado did a really, really good job. And, again, going back to Breaking Bad, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, you know, compare him to Brian Cranston as Walter White because he's he's not necessarily turning evil. I would compare him to the dude from the opening 15 minutes of Minority Report, the guy who's trying to kill his wife. And he's just like, he's not acting out of his own volition really, he's just, it's kind of like a crime of passion kind of thing, and he just doesn't really have a good hold of, you know, what he's doing. And I thought Gabe Mercado really put that through really well because you were still able to feel sympathy for the guy. And I just really, really like all the small touches that give this world life, you know, just the fact that this guy sees the dead lady at the back of his car and it's just like nothing. Like, I just like those little touches and it really adds to the eeriness of it all. It definitely is the eeriest among the three. It felt almost like a psychological horror film at a certain point and I like that. I like how it was able to balance those aspects. My only complaint is that maybe there's a bit too much focus on Gabe Mercado's character because, I don't know, for me to be able to care about his character more, I wanted to be able to care about the people surrounding him and wanted to understand, like, let's say his wife more, and wanted to understand why she did the things she did, and, you know, just knowing where they came from will make me understand more why, you know, he's kind of going crazy. But overall, I thought Nakina really was the best, because it, for me, it was the most polished, it was the most tightly written, a uh, really great performance from Gabe Mercado. And the third part, we have Pusakal. And this is the one I enjoyed the least, like I really, mm, I didn't really understand what it was trying to do. I felt like it was trying to be a bit too many things, because, uh, you know, there's one part of it that's trying to be like this, you know, youth in revolt kind of thing. Not the movie, I mean like really youth in revolt. And then there's this other thing with this uh, more political crime stuff, and just, mm, it just kind of teeters between those two sides, and it's kind of weird. So yeah, I kind of feel like it had a bit too much story for this like 35 minute running time. And I thought, you know, with that story, I think Ellie Buendia focused a bit too much on, like, the quieter moments. Like, at a certain point, I decided, oh, I think this is just this is trying to be, like, intentionally not like the first two parts. It's trying to be more contemplative, and then it becomes violent near the end. It's like, oh, okay, I lost it there. Also, in terms of production, I thought this was, like, 
I don't know what happened with the sound, but stuff happens with the sound here where they kind of forget to edit out the sound of cars passing by, and you can't hear the dialogue, and I was really bothered by that, because kind of like a simple thing you can fix, but I don't know what happened. Also, some of the shots get really weird sometimes, like, you get like a wide shot of something, but it's it's moving around like as if you're watching it on like a screen and that screen is being blown by the wind so i don't know what what is up with that like it could have worked let's say in machina because you know it's kind of weird and eerie but here that wasn't really the tone i think to ali Bundia's credit though i guess uh the dialogue was fine um i thought megan young did a good job but i didn't didn't think she was given that much to do because she's always just kind of freaking out the entire movie and while i do think the dialogue is written well i think ali Bundia has this penchant for inserting like cultural stuff in there like there's a certain point where this, this uh, gangster guy or whatever he was is just kind of saying these kind of cliched intimidation lines and it made me think of the first part bang bang alley where you know the whole joke with my way it's just kind of strange dialogue but overall the dialogue is fine it, i just thought it wasn't directed as well i think Pusakal really was like the most ambitious part of this because it had so much story to tell i just didn't think it was handled that well. I did like, like how it wasn't necessarily going for like a message, you know, like it had a very ambiguous message in there and I like that just didn't come off that well. Now overall, the entire movie as a whole, I did have problems with the editing throughout. Um, like there's lots of kind of jarring shots, like I kind of lose continuity at certain points and with Asat Pusat Taga, when it kind of time skips and says like three months later or something like that, it just feels too abrupt. And also with the order of the films, like in the grand scheme of things, I think Machina could have been last because it gives the most definitive ending. But overall, there were good things also. I really liked the score throughout the entire thing. I thought it was great because, you know, it managed to hit very different beats. And I liked how there is sort of like a unifying theme here. It's really about, I think, at least to me, people kind of running away from their problems or finding themselves in situations where they have to face certain things they did in the past and I like that and I like how they kind of try to tie everything together just by you know subtle things like this radio show that keeps playing or this reporter so overall as a movie in general I think Bang Bang Alley is just an okay movie although it does have good things in it it's interesting to see how modern Philippine crime movies are turning out because they seem to be following this trend of like really small kind of political but i'm not saying i don't enjoy that in fact i like it. it gives it like a unique flavor to our you know film industry to have these small crime films and in the end i really am just glad that there's so much ambition going on in this movie like i like how it's so unique i'd rather have something like this than something that is completely safe and cookie cutter so that is my review of bang bang alley kudos of course to the directors i really hope they keep you know honing their craft if they really do want to pursue this film thing i think they do have potential in them but have you guys seen Bang Bang Alley? If you have, what do you think of it? Whether you loved it or you hated it, tell me what you loved about it or hated about it. And whatever you think, please leave me a comment and let's have a conversation.